Well, here to talk with us about meat from the vat and technological advances in food production is Henry Yiga from the Institute of Food Technology and Food Chemistry at Berlin's own Technical University. Thanks for joining us. So the idea here basically is to give cells grown in a lab a workout to make the perfect steak. Um, that sounds like it would put butchers out of business. How seriously should we take this idea? Well, basically serious from a scientific point of view, probably a bit less serious from an application point of view and from bringing this product to the market at this stage. Would you personally eat meat that has been grown in a vat? Well, actually, I would be very interested in taste this meat, try it. Um, I'm not sure if I would uh, make it part of my uh, daily diet. There are already plenty of meat substitutes out there. Uh, most of them are made from soy, and at least visually, we've got a couple of soy Würstchen here. They can't really be distinguished from normal um, hot dogs, but taste and consistency uh, are a little bit different. Their meat substitutes there still have a long way to go. Why is that? Yeah, well, basically, it's a completely different raw material. It's plant protein, protein from a soybean source. We are also working on other protein sources, rapeseed, for example, still containing a lot of valuable protein. And the question is, how close do we have to get to the meat structure, to the taste of meat? Um, it depends on the consumer acceptance and on consumer wishes concerning the alternatives to meat. And these products are already accepted and liked by the consumer. So. You just mentioned um, rapeseed there. Are food technologists working on, on other non-soy-based alternatives? Yes. I mean, soybean is a very common alternative protein used to replace meat protein, used to replace dairy protein, milk protein, for example. But there are different other sources of protein, like rapeseed, for example. Different plant uh, raw materials still uh, contain a lot of interesting proteins from a nutritional point of view, but also from a functionality point of view, um, how can these proteins affect our food structure when we apply them or um, take them and put them in other um, food matrices. So this is quite interesting. When it comes to diet, uh, opinions differ dramatically when it comes to meat specifically. There are carnivorous people out there like myself who would love to eat a steak every day. And then there are vegans, for example, who live just, just on fruit and, and nuts. How do you, as a food technologist, approach the topic of meat in your own diet? Well, the best option would be to find a way in between a diet based on cereals, based on plant, fruit and vegetable products. Um, it's probably the one um, which should be recommended. And of course, from a taste point of view, um, a piece of meat um, has a lot of um, yeah, positive aspects. Um, but of course, we are able to replace this meat um, protein source by alternative plant proteins. That's uh, quite possible already at this stage of the development. All right, Henry Yeager, thank you very much for joining us on today's show.